Five, four, three. Omega Psi Phi and the American Red Cross Blood Drive. Learn more right after this. If you drive buzzed, it could cost you around $10,000. You'll face major legal fees, major fines, and steep insurance penalties. You could lose everything. Nothing kills a buzz like getting pulled over for buzz driving. Because buzz driving is drunk driving. Welcome to Community Watch. Great. <laughs> <laughs> I have to wait till. No, you just wait for the, the signal. Yeah. <laughs> all, right, all right. Um, how are you? I'm I'm fine. What about you? I was all right until I got here. <laughs> then it went downhill. <laughs> but we have a great show today. We have a talking about the Omega Sci Fi. Uh, local fraternity that's doing a lot of things in the community, very active, and uh, so, you know, we're going to be talking about the blood drive they got coming up. I a little could bit about use some that. blood. I could use some. Uh, well, I can't share. I mean, I don't, I, I don't know if I can just share and give you some, but uh, it's, it's important. I did learn mm -hmm. during our HEM event when they we collect blood that I think one pint of blood, they can use that one pint to save possible four lives. Yeah. They use the blood, the plasma, and all of that. Right. I just think that's kind of fascinating. Right. Do you give? I, I have, but uh, it's been a little while since I've given any. Um, they accepted it then. I, I don't know if it's still good, but <laughs> at the time they accepted it. Um, but it is, it is something you can do fairly, more often than I realize. Yeah. Um, and it save lives, you know? When you're talking about being a hero, right. you know, that, that, that is, yeah. to me, you know, you actually are saving lives. Right. Well, um, we will have a representative from the fraternity um, doing this event or in charge of this event and hear all the details about it. So stay with us. We'll be right back after this. I'm transferring to the University of West Georgia. Columbia University. Kennesaw State. UGA. Loyola University in Chicago. Grambling State. Shorter University. I'm going to Greensboro College and we all got our start at Georgia Highlands. No matter where your educational journey takes you, you can get your start at Georgia Highlands College. Georgia Highlands College. Enroll, engage, excel. Welcome back to Community Watch. We're very happy to have with us today Mr. Reginald McDaniel. Doctor. Hey, Doctor. Reginald. You didn't <laughs> tell me that. You didn't tell me that. How you doing? Dr. Like, McDaniel. Hey, great, great, great to be here. Um, well, tell us a little bit about the fraternity because, I, I mean, Greg knows everything, but I, I do <laughs> not. So. Uh, well, yes. Uh, Mega Sci Fi Fraternity is an organization that was founded uh, in 1911 mm -hmm. on the campus of Howard University. Uh, there are about three undergrads, of course, with one uh, advisor um, but that also helped them watch over the fraternity. But it was basically organized there in the, in the state of Washington uh, and then just forming, just grew, like say, all over the world. And it, like I say, it's incorporated, so it's pretty much in uh, the United States as well as across seas and so on. And the, and the chapter that's involved in Summit is a local chapter? Yes, it's a local chapter of uh, Tommy Mew is uh, located here in Rome, Georgia, which was also founded in uh, 2011. Mm. Yes, sir. That's pretty old. That's been a while, a few years. 2011? Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's, that's good. Um, is this, the, is this a, uh, an event that, that y'all do annually? Yes, it's an event that, we, uh, that goes on annually. Uh, it's set out to observe uh, one of the um, gentlemen, f former gentlemen, well, uh, 
brothers of Omega Psi Phi, uh, Dr. Charles Drew, uh, for his contribution and work uh, that was associated with um, blood drives and everything for the founding of plasma and stuff and so on. Mm -hmm. Oh, so Dr. Charles Drew was an Omega? Yes. Uh, okay, we'll we give him a pass. I mean, you know, everybody <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know that, but that actually makes sense that in in honor of him, True. if the Omegas nationally, uh, or at least locally, I know, if you're, you know, connecting that, doing blood drives, because really all of us in modern society pretty much owe him for his for his, his advancements, yeah, true, with true, blood, true. yeah. Uh, just, just like you I was talking about earlier, talking about the plasma and how these different things that come out of just out of giving blood, so many things that are used for life-saving events, uh, all that can be contributed to you. It started with him. Well, um, tell me some of the details about the event itself. Uh, the event itself is basically, uh, like Sim said, to be here in the city of Rome, Georgia, uh, June the 5th. Well, we'll be located here on the, um, the new Publix parking lot. Uh, we will be there from 12 to 7. Uh, what we're doing now, we're trying to get at least 50 people to sign up for the blood drive in order that the blood drive can be successful. Um, if anyone wants to volunteer to give blood, they can basically go to the American Red Cross uh, website there, put in the source code OMEGA, and just put in the time that they want as far as their appointment and so on. Now, you, you, another reason why I just think it's so critical um, to give blood from an African American perspective, mm -hmm. because of sickle cell, a lot of times we, sure. you know, usually blood for sickle cell patients, you prim primarily can only get from African Americans, primarily. And we, from last I, I was told, we give less than most people for it's given in blood. But yet we have the highest population in sickle cell. So we have an imbalance there. That's why it becomes even more important uh, for organizations like the Omega to head something like this because we need to make sure that we're getting blood from everybody, but we need to make sure that African Americans who have sickle cell, who need that blood, have the resources available to them. And I don't know that most of us realize that everybody can't give, you know, they can't take everybody blood for sickle cell. That's true, that's true. And so we have an extra responsibility as African Americans, to make sure that our brothers and sisters who have sickle cell, if they need blood, that you know it's there, because you would hate to. I mean, just the thought of not having blood available in today's society, uh, with all that we do, just I don't know if we even think about it. Um, why? Why do you suppose that is that people are reluctant to give blood? I think it's just the the stigma of the fear of just being, I guess, poked with needles. Uh, some of them may be uh, afraid that they may not can't give blood due to something, some type of other illness that they have going on. But a lot of time, uh, just if they would just go through the screening process, because there is a screening process that is done before an individual actually gives blood, mm -hmm. to make sure that they're healthy enough and to make sure that, like Sim said, they're able to contribute to the blood drive itself. So uh, if we can just get the word out and get rid of the stigma of, of people being afraid to give blood, uh, thinking of that it gonna, it's gonna hurt or it's gonna cause them to collapse or anything mm -hmm. of that nature, then I think we can pretty much get to the point uh, where we'll see a lot more people giving blood. Uh, now, it's, it's been a couple of years, like I said, but um, it seems to me the last time I gave blood that was it was a pretty simple process. Yes, yes, very easy process, a very safe process at the same time. Mm -hmm. uh, another reason may be that some people feel that, well, if I give blood, maybe I'll get stuck by an infected needle or something of this nature. But it's a very safe process. Uh, there's no harm or no danger at all. And, and uh, if you're if you're working on appointments, I I assume there the appointments will be given. They'll be given a certain time to be there. Yes, a general th time th there's a general time. If an individual likes him to say, uh, we understand some people will be working. Some of them will be doing it at lunchtime. Some of them may be coming in at the last minute or uh, have other appointments and everything set. Uh, just it just basically depends on the individual. We would like to set up the appointments time so that way that we can have a structure as far as who's going to be there and when at what time. Mm -hmm. Let me ask you this, uh, Reg, if What if a person can't attend on June the 5th, can they still go in and register under the Omega source code on another date? I'm not really sure, but I, I'm thinking that it may not be possible. It may not be possible that they can. But like I said, say, it's an annual event. So uh, this is the first time that I, this local chapter of Roma that we will be doing it, but it will be other opportunities in the future for anybody who wants to participate in it. Say, for instance, if someone wants to give and they don't get a chance to give this year, then they can give next year. 
Well, I ain't gonna wait the next year, Reg. I'm gonna <laughs> get my blood away. <laughs> but I, I know I'll be out of town that particular day. Um, and I don't know what other people's plans are, but but that is one of those things where, but I, I have to commend the Omegas on this, is because I really do think as men, that model, that role model, that you know, we have to make it cool to give blood. We have to sure. make it okay to give blood. And I think when you have a group of men uh, addressing the issue, that it, it changes the perspective. You know, we can hang out and talk about football. We can hang out and talk about the draft. We can hang out and talk about a lot of other stuff. Why can't we hang out at this blood drive and still talk about football, still talk about whatever, but at the same time, we're gonna also give some life saving, you know, blood while we doing this. And I think y'all need to be commended because I do think that is a need, especially within our community. Well, thank you. Thank you a lot. Thank you a lot. Um, so 50 appointments, or you're shooting for? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We're shooting for 50 appointments, but we'll take as many as we can possibly get. So uh, why, why did you set the number 50? Is that? Um, uh, we said that that's the standard that comes from the American Red Cross in order for it to be successful or because there are so many things that they provide as far as uh, like refreshments mm -hmm. they're going to bring the blood mobile and they'll bring the individuals who will be doing the screening and testing and it's, it's pretty much a, like say a, 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 it's a qualification that comes through the American Red Cross of a, of a number that you must have. So that's the number you've had to, to use in previous Yes, sir. As well. in, in previous, I'm, and from my understanding, uh, when sh when speaking with the uh, the lady that I'm dealing with, uh, Miss Angela from the American Red Cross, she just basically made it known that uh, you must be at least 50 people that are given uh, are prepared to give. Which is not a large number at all when you really no, think about it. No, no, and like I said, we're we're looking. Um, we're looking. We're asking community individuals to come out. Uh, at the same time, there are other grad chapters. Uh, the Delta Sigma Theta, Alpha Kappa Alpha, and various others they met that are going to come in and help us as far as trying to make this blood drive successful. So mm -hmm. we just want to make it a, a community event that where, like to say, everybody can come out and just participate in it uh, for a good cause. H how long is the the day going to be, or will it depend on? It's it's, the it's scheduled. It's scheduled uh, from twelve in the afternoon until seven. PM that that evening, yeah. and uh, like Simmons said, that is the time frame that we were allotted from right. the American Red Cross. And I'm and I'm assuming, in the public parking lot, that the potential to pick up pedestrian traffic True. Is, is pretty great. True. Uh, I guess you'd have to get it before uh, you wouldn't get your ice cream or whatever <laughs> <laughs> in that hot sun. <laughs> but there's a lot of traffic in that. Was it the Charles Height Shopping yeah, Square or something right. like that? Yeah, the new shopping square that yeah. is there. Yeah. Well, that, that, I mean, it seems, certainly seems doable. Would you allow people who uh, don't have an appointment to just show up, just walk in? Uh, yes, pretty sure, yes I, uh, I'm pretty sure that would be a space given for them, for those who just walk in. Um, because like we all know, some people may schedule appointments and they may have other things that come up. So if uh, individuals decide that they just want to walk up mm -hmm. or they see the blood drive going on, they want to participate, they're more than welcome to participate. Yeah. Um, I don't suppose you know how many, what your record is thus far since you've been doing no, this. No, event. no, no, we don't know. Because um, it'd be nice to have a, a record target True. to shoot for. Have a goal to shoot for. Well, I know we do ours, we hit about 90. I'm just saying. Really? <laughs> 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 I, I think I'm just uh, putting it out there I, that, you I, know. I, I think he want a little bragging right <laughs> <laughs> so I'm, gonna, I'm just a little challenge. A little, uh, you know, I, 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 feel little, I feel the little challenge. brotherly challenge, you know, a yeah. little brotherly challenge. Now, and how many, how many, uh, times do you give during the day to reach that 90? Well, we get it's, we do it during him. And so all during that day, people mm -hmm. can go, which is, no, from 8 to 12. So a lot of it is your personal blood? No. No. Not my personal. Oh, blood. I thought you just gave But um, I do think being in that location, there's a great potential for a lot of just walk-up traffic. True, true. But, um, but I, and I also think just, you know, having that right environment where people can come true. out, it's not... I, I don't know, as you just said, I really don't know why people are so afraid to give blood. I mean, and it's, yeah, it is one of those stigmas we still have to fight. Well, uh, we're coming up on a, a break here. So when we come back, we'll talk more about the event. And I want to hear some more about the organization as okay. well. So uh, stay with us. We'll be right back after this. Hi, 
May I please have an application? Thank you. Skip the drama. Get your diploma. Okay. Take that first step towards a better future. Find free adult education classes at finishyourdiploma.org. Welcome back to Community Watch. We're talking with Dr. Reginald McDaniel, uh, who is a member of Omega Sci-Fi, and uh, they have a blood drive coming up on June 5th. And uh, for you to, to, to give that day, they want you to make an appointment and go to the Red Cross site? Is that yes, yes, www.americanredcross. Uh, put in the source code OMEGA, O-M-E-G-A, and there you can make your appointment okay. for So uh, we need at least 90 people to do this, right? Yeah, we need. <laughs> they can try, I mean, yeah. <laughs> 91 would be great. <laughs> um, so, um, I know that the, the organization is up to a, a, a lot of things. It's a, it's a busy organization. True, true. It's a very busy organization. Uh, as a matter of fact, we're doing a lot of great things here in the city uh, of Rome, Georgia. We've done things from as far as like the seamless meals, which in the summertime where we're in the downtown area of Rome, handing out meals to the children that are um, out for the school breaks that may find themselves not, get, not being able to get a quality meal as they do when school is in mm -hmm. versus being at home all the time. Also, uh, we've done various other things as far as like uh, an HIV dinner for HIV pack patients that are in a housing program through the Highland River Mental Health Behavior Center. Um, we've done many other things as far as mentoring, over, especially at the PLC building. Um, there we mentor in, in helping with those students in, in that program that has been put together by the uh, Rome City School Board and everything and so on. And like I said, uh, various other things as far as highway cleaning up, um, just volunteering community service and everything and so on. Well, uh, that that's even busier than I realized. <laughs> uh, well, it's actually, uh, we actually do a lot even more than that. I yeah. just didn't want to make Greg jealous. You know? <laughs> <laughs> since he's since he's yeah. bragging about the the I, ninety, I, I, you, you know, I ain't, you know that ain't even the issue for me. <laughs> <laughs> but I have to say, uh, we we collaborate a lot with the Americans, true, um, true. and that's been one of the, the things I really enjoy about the leadership and the members of the, of the Omegas that, as men, we've been able to put aside our egos as men and come together and work together. We recently had a mentor bowling event. True. Well, we had over 120 people at the bowling alley, and it was about mentors and uh, mentors and being with mentees, and it was a, it was really good to have so many black men in a positive environment with young black men, uh, and it's for them to see that interaction between organizations and brothers. And it was the the AKs, the Deltas was there as well, but um, I, the Megas, I mean, you know, they they're doing a lot of good work and. Uh, it's going to be interesting. We're we pressing them, you know. They, they've they uh, have agreed to be a sponsor for Foundation Camp. Uh, and so I really can uh, say they're putting their money where their mouth is. You know, they're they on board. <laughs> well, uh, maybe a little healthy uh, competition between the organizations wouldn't be a bad thing. Well, that ain't, that competition is just... <laughs> <laughs> <that's not> <laughs> <laughs> but uh, they are. They, they've, been, they've been great in... Uh, and but it's awesome to see um, because you don't have a lot of fraternities in in Rome, to my knowledge, mm -hmm. especially historically black fraternities. True. Uh, the megas. Uh, I mean, you got some members that belong to them, but an, the actual organization. And so the Omega actually have a grad chapter here, so that uh, if a young man is interested in becoming a Omega, he can actually become a Omega if he you know already has a four year degree. Uh, because they do have a, a graduate chapter here in Rome, which That's I think is the idea. only. That's a good idea. Which is like yes, it's, it's the it's the only. Um, from my understanding, it's the only male grad chapter that is here in the city of Rome. There may be others, uh, but I don't have knowledge of them. Me either. And like I said, to say, um, but I'm gonna put this out in public, so because mm -hmm. I know Greg gonna roast. I, I don't have my purple and gold shirt. <laughs> so usually, when you see a member of the Omega Psi Phi fraternity in uh they have on the purple and gold, which is what we were recognized by. Uh, and usually I'm in it, but today just happened to be one of those odd days. So 
competition. 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 Really. competition. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, Reggie, I'm curious. Um, if a young man that has a four-year degree, because it's a grad chapter, so you already have to have a four-year degree. True. What what should they do if they injure? Do they do they do they come to you or do y'all recruit? What is, what is the process? There's there's at the time of uh, when they're uh, preparing to have new gentlemen to enter into uh, the Omega Sci Fi fraternity. Um, there is an uh, what we call a meeting that is held as far as an interest meeting, and at that time it is it is public stated, it's publicly made known through the newspaper uh, by word of mouth um, websites and stuff and various other information. And, and at that point, an individual can come to the interest meeting, learn about Omega Sci Fi fraternity, uh, learn about the history, the four cardinal principles, and those things that we're trying to do in the community, uh, and just and just give them an idea, in a sense, uh, of what the fraternity does and what it's all about. Because, like Sim said, we don't want anybody to um, be a member of it that doesn't have that information of understanding what it's all about. Mm -hmm. Because so many times we will recognize for so many other things because at the same time, not only is there grad chapters, but there's also undergrad chapters, which are in college. And we can tell even pretty much nowadays from just looking at the news, a lot of undergrad chapters, not just Omega, but there are various others that have found themselves in trouble uh, due to certain behavior. So we're trying to, trying to kill that kind of ideal, uh, just wanting individuals to understand that it's much more to it than what is just heard or passed by by the word, you know. Well, uh, obviously, service is uh, a crucial aspect. True, you, that service is a, is a big aspect of, of the fraternity, like Sim said, because um, we try to do as much community service as we possibly can. Mm -hmm. And that's the whole base of it. So uh, anyone interested in, in becoming a member has to know going in that that's a part of it. True, I would say so. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, and I think the whole process, the initiation process, I mean, is great. And uh, that's something the 100 has to, we have start looking at our process differently because you put people through a process. And you know right away if you're going to have somebody committed or not. If you're willing to go through the process, then the commitment, you would expect to be there on the other end. And so we actually are taking a page from y'all book and saying, okay, how do we need to restructure our mm -hmm. intake process? You know, okay. because we want to make sure when people get this pen, it ain't just a pen, that they sure. really understand that is what it means it. Yeah. and the commitment that comes sure. with the pen. So sure. we actually are taking a step in from what y'all are doing because y'all have been very successful since 2011 uh, in recruiting young men and True. getting people involved. So yeah. And we, we, should, we should actually make a note of that, that what Greg stated, so that he actually observed something being done <laughs> by the Omega men and he wants to take the idea. Well actually, <laughs> well, actually you think about it, about 50% of your members are members of the 100. So. <laughs> <laughs> most definitely, yeah, most, so, most definitely. Know, but, uh, but I, I, I'm glad to have True. that the Omegas is here because um, having that, that brotherhood that we talk about for, for kids in elementary school, True. I think they have to see it. And people need to, you know, everybody's not meant for the 100. Everybody's not meant for the Omega. True. Everybody's not meant for the Progressive Roman. Everybody's not meant for every organization. But here's another option. True. Here's another option that may be for you. And I think just having more options, more professional organizations for black men I think it's something that's good to have, and having Omegas here, I think, makes a difference. Because you just, that other layer of brotherhood and, and fellowship, because I've actually met guys through the Omega that live here in Rome that our circle just never crossed. But through the Omega and, I, and the relationship between the 100 and the Omega, I'm now make, meeting more brothers just through that association. And to me, that's a, that's a powerful thing and a win-win. So we need to get some of them B2B members. <laughs> well, that makes sense. Yeah. That makes sense. Um, well. When they get their four-year degree. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm grateful to both organizations. So I can, I can be sort of in the middle <laughs> in, in that regard. <laughs> Most of um, well, um, it sounds like the blood drive is just, w just one of the things you have going uh, even this summer, I mean, true. Um, so, 
do you do you have like a, a cal do you work on a, a calendar of things or do they do they come up um, uh, yes we do uh, there are there are uh, events that are which 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 we, we uh, events that are originally done by the Omega chapters mm -hmm. um, of Omega Sci Fi, which are done yearly, and uh, which are just basically our mandated programs, and the Blood Drive just happened to be one of those mandated programs mm -hmm. that we do. Well, um, the Blood Drive again is is June fifth, um, so you have a you have a little time now to to make your appointments and to store up your blood. <laughs> um, Eat well and, and you know get Weird your blood thing. in shape and because uh, we're looking for ninety one. Well, yeah, yeah. Actually, they could be. I mean, they really want to impress me. 90, do a hundred, a hundred, <laughs> do, do one hundred. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but it's really good though. I mean, it's um to see brothers, for me to see brothers active in the community, being a part of the solution, uh, playing our role. Uh, from health to education, I just, I just think this is a great thing that the Omegas is doing because of, we, we take blood for granted as a society. Let's just be honest. We don't think about it. We don't give as a society. We don't give nearly as much blood as we could. We uh, go about our daily lives. No time we think about blood if we're in an accident and we, we need some. Other than that, we really don't think about it. We kind of take it for granted. And so it's important, I think, to have blood drive so that when we do have that when someone do have that car wreck and have that emergency and they need blood, that it's available uh, because we it's not manufactured. I mean, you know, you can only get it from one source, and we kind of take it for granted that, you know, if I'm in an accident, it's going to be there. Well, someone has to give it in order for it to be there. So uh, I'm just really grateful that they're, that the Megas has taken this on as some, one, of they, one of their things, you know, locally. Well, it, it, you're right. It definitely is something that you – you want to be there when you or your family. Yeah. Um, so um, the, this drive is is crucial, uh, and and other drives like it. But this is a this is a great opportunity, yeah. um, and the uh, fraternity Omega Sci Fi have made it kind of easy for you to do it. You don't have to um, try to work it into uh, to your schedule. It's already, you know, the set up for you. You just have to make your appointment. So uh, it's open to everybody, black, Hispanic, white. They take they want blood from everybody, <laughs> <laughs> everybody. Equal opportunity. Equal blood. opportunity yeah. blood drive. Uh, and we will give you the directions once again uh, to make your appointment for that day. So stay with us. We'll be right back after this. Hi, may I please have an application? Thank you. Skip the drama. Get your diploma. Okay. Take that first step towards a better future. Find free adult education classes at finishyourdiploma.org. Welcome back to Community Watch. We've been talking with Dr. Reginald McDaniel of Omega Sci-Fi about the Red Cross Blood Drive that the fraternity is sponsoring coming up on June 5th. And you have to make an appointment, need to make an appointment to, to, to uh, give your blood that day. Correct. You can walk up. You can, you can. but we want people to yeah. make an appointment because mm -hmm. they have to have 50 uh, to make it work. And you go to the Red Cross website. Yes, go to the Red, Red Cross website. Uh, once again, once you go on there, you type in the source code Omega, and there you can go ahead and set up an appointment for them. All right, so make sure you do that. And we appreciate you being with us. We'll see you next time on Community Watch. <laughs>